This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Welcome in. It is the Thursday, March 14th edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures or make it easy on yourself. Just go to winningcureseverything.com. Short show today. We're doing it a little bit late. Uh, we're going to talk Will Wade requesting to come back and coach. And then I'm going to give you some college basketball picks. And that's about it because you don't have time to waste on me. You're trying to watch basketball. I understand. I understand. As always, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books down there. You can go check out all of them over at tunicatravel.com. We will be down there broadcasting live at 10 a.m. on Thursday, March 21st, Friday, March 22nd, the first two days of the NCAA tournament. We're going to be at Samstown Casino in Tunica. It's going to be a good time. Come hang out. We're watching basketball from opening tip all the way until the very last basket goes in. So come and hang out with us down in Tunica at Samstown. Uh, you can find more information over on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash winning cures everything. Let's jump into the topic of the day for us. Uh, Will Wade, he released a statement this morning. He said, uh, this morning I advised President Alexander, Athletic Director Joe Oliva, and the LSU Board of Supervisors that I would like to resume my duties as head coach. Last week, when the university decided to place me on administrative leave, I accepted the decision without complaint as I knew that they wanted time to reflect on the flurry of media reports. With the benefit of a week to consider the circumstances, I believe university officials should allow me to resume my duties. I understand that in today's hyper-intense media environment, it is extremely difficult for any organization, uh, particularly a public university, to stand firm in the face of rumors, leaks, and innuendo. In this case, the simple truth is I have been placed on leave because I exercised my right not to submit to a joint LSU-NCAA interview on the exact same subject matter at issue in an impending federal criminal trial in New York. My legal counsel advised the university that it would be wholly inappropriate for me or anyone to submit to an interview under these circumstances. Declining to be interviewed was a difficult decision for me as I would like to cooperate fully with all parties, particularly LSU. To be clear, however, all I've done is follow the prudent advice of counsel to exercise my rights. Uh, let's see. Oh, rights to due process. Given these facts, I don't believe it is appropriate for me to be relieved of my duties. We have a great basketball program made up of excellent student athletes and quality coaches. The players who have given their all for this institution, the students and alumni who are devoted to LSU, and fans all across Louisiana are beyond deserve oh, and beyond, deserve to see this team fulfill its destiny. Long statement. Uh, he said, I love LSU and everything it stands for. What I'm asking for is the right to do my job while exercising my constitutional rights. I don't think that's too much to ask. Now, when when you read this uh, statement that was done by LSU, uh, Tom Skinner, the school's general counsel, you'll understand why they can't let him come back and coach. Okay? They told Sports Illustrated, Tom Skinner did, who is the general counsel for the school, he said, in everything that's been said by Will and his folks in the past week, not once have they denied any wrongdoing. Uh, as a university and employer, we need to hear our employees say, I did not do anything wrong, or explain the circumstances, or admit he did do something wrong. We've been unable to get to that point. We have no choice in terms of institutional control to not suspend someone. The phrase institutional control is tossed around, but the shorthand version is the NCAA wants universities to have control over their programs. They want those universities to have procedures and follow those procedures. If there is potential wrongdoing that arises, what did the university do to stop that wrongdoing and take appropriate action? I see both sides here. Yes, Will probably should have come out and said, I didn't do anything. But if he actually did do something... I mean, you're going to lose your job either way, right? I mean, what's what's the point here? And if you're LSU, you're probably never going to get this season back. So why not take your shot and just play in the post? Because you're getting in the postseason anyway. Go take your shot. Get in the NCAA tournament. See if you can make a Final Four. I've been harping this for over a week now. I am of the opinion that you let him coach. You know, these are just media reports right now. Nothing has come out in a federal trial or anything like that. So, I mean, what are what are we even doing here? 
And so just because one person said that something happened, or two or three people said, um, does that make it true? You know, and if, if it was a joint meeting with the NCAA that LSU was trying to set up, it's shame on them for that, but it may not have been their choice, right? The NCAA, but they, they may have just shown up and said, okay, we're setting up shop here until something comes out. So they may be there until the end of April, <laughs> later on in the summer. We don't know how long this trial is going to last. I mean, there's jury selection. There's all the other days. There's however long this stuff takes. It, it, it could take a really long time is all I'm saying. So uh, interesting stuff coming out of LSU today with Will Wade. It appears he will not be back, even though I think he probably should be. Uh, but that's just my opinion. We'll see. All right, I got a ton of picks today. Ton of picks. Uh, already started out 1-0. and Not looking good on the other one. Some of these are in progress. Some are not. I'm just going to toss it out there to you. Look, if you followed the picks yesterday, you went 7-0. and I went 10-0 and with an extra money line after after the show and two live bets. 10-0 and against the number yesterday. Today, started out 1-0 and with Villanova. It's not looking too good with Maryland minus 5. Uh, not happy about that. Oh, Central Michigan, already covered. I had them plus two and a half. Again, if you're following the website, winningcureseverything.com slash gambling dash picks. We got them all over there. Uh, here's more for the evening slate. All right, I've got Tulsa plus two against SMU. I've got uh, a Moneyline parlay here that paid out plus 235. It was George Mason, Toledo, Nevada, uh, UC Irvine, Auburn, Mississippi State, and Texas Tech. Uh, UC Irvine, it, it, that's easy. Nevada, they are in a tight game with Boise State. I think they're probably still going to get it done. George Mason already covered. Uh, Auburn is winning right now, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, take the teams that are left and go cash you a ticket. New Mexico plus 14 against Utah State. Uh, Utah State likes to let games be a little bit closer against subpar teams. Uh, I don't look for them to come out and, and blow anybody away right now. Maryland minus five. Already talked about that. Uh, the score to that one as of right now is, and they don't have it updated. Of course they don't. So, yeah, uh, 44 to 30, Nebraska. So probably not covering with 12 minutes left in that game. Uh, Marshall plus three tonight against Southern Miss. Uh, Marshall is on a roll right now. I like them a lot. I think Southern Miss has gotten the most that they can get out of their talent. Uh, and Allen Boston likes Marshall, and I'm all over that, right? I had Marshall last night, minus six and a half against Rice. I think they do it again today against Southern Miss. Northern Illinois plus eight against Toledo. I think Toledo is going to win the game, but I like Northern Illinois to cover. I think this is going to be right down to the wire. These are two really good teams, both streaking right now. Uh, I've got another money line parlay, North Carolina, Texas Tech, Mississippi State. That is minus 135. So basically, you bet thirteen dollars and fifty cents, you win ten bucks. Easy enough, simple math. And then I've got Minnesota plus three against Penn State. Everybody loves Penn State right now; they are playing exceptionally well. But I think I like Minnesota here because of so much public uh, love for Penn State. Right? This is still a a fourteen fifteen win team, and Minnesota's going to the NCAA tournament. So give me Minnesota. I like this team tonight. Uh, this kind of reminds me of Indiana and Ohio State. It's like, well, we know Minnesota's pretty good, but Penn State's been really good lately. Well, we knew Ohio State was pretty good, but Indiana's been really good lately. Like, yeah, we're, we're going to go with Minnesota plus three here. So, uh, as always, go over to the website, winningcureseverything.com. Click on the navigation bar where it says gambling picks. The picks will be up every day. Or if you're watching the video on Facebook or YouTube, it's down in the description. Just click the link there. Super easy. We appreciate you guys. We are a week away from the madness. Again, we're going to be down at Samstown March 21st, March 22nd. We are broadcasting live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter at 10 a.m. Central Time. It's going to be a good time. Uh, make your plans. Come on down. Hang out with us. We appreciate the support. Share the show out. Subscribe on uh, YouTube and on the podcast. We will see you guys again tomorrow.
Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.